the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing, and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen, and you'll agree. Then there's the program with a heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you Welcome Travelers and interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. Then there's Music and Charm with Dial Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday... Chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, here's today's adventure with the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Troop Train. It is 4.30 a.m. on the morning of January 6, 1943. About 12 miles east of Humboldt, Texas, an army troop train roars westward through the darkness. In the smoking room of one sleeping car, a burly private of 30 plays solitaire. His lone companion, a 19-year-old PFC, stares out of the window. What do you see out there in the dark, anyway? Texas? Well, take a good look. It'll be a long time. You live around here, don't you? About 40 miles south, Pinker, Texas. My mother had an operation a couple of days ago. Sure wished I could see her. Oh, well, you got it bad, kid. Eh, never can beat this game. Ever been away from home before? We used to go to Beaumont to visit my grandmother. Never been out of Texas in my whole life. Eh, you ain't missed nothing. I've been as far as New Jersey. <laughs> you can have it, and this stinking army with it. Why are you always sounding off about the army? Maybe you found a home in it. Well, it's the only one we'll have for a mighty long time. Not me. I'm saying adios any minute now. Like I told you back at camp, I'm getting off this train before we get to that port. You, uh, you've been thinking about what I was telling you? Well, yeah, I guess I have. But I ain't skipping the outfit. Well, I am. No Jap's gonna shove a bayonet in my belly. How are you gonna get off the train? Well, we're starting up the cap rock. I can jump off easy any time the train slows down on one of these upgrades. Suppose you get caught. <laughs> I expect to be sooner or later. Don't you see it, kid? They catch me, give me a court martial. I get six months or a year. That's better than a Jap bullet, ain't it? I don't know. You could go home and see your mother and wait for the MPs to bring you back, so you get six months. Or maybe you can volunteer for overseas duty and they forget the court martial. Well, suppose they're waiting there before he even see my mother. They won't even know we're gone until they get to the POE. What do you say, Darcy? If I could get back to the outfit again. Better make up your mind. I'm taking off. You coming? Well, it's taking a big chance. Now just say yes or no. All right, I'm coming. Good deal. Now let's make it fast. Go on down the steps. Go on, jump! Hey, don't push! Wind out of me. That won't hurt you. Come on. We're in a pretty rugged country. We got a lot of walking to do. Uh, sun's coming up. It's going to get hot pretty soon. Uh, What's well, a little heat? As long as we're away from that chicken army. Well, how's it feel to be a free man, Darcy? 
I'm sorry I did it. Ah, what's eating you? No, I've been thinking. You got me in a lousy mess. Ah, for crying out loud, I did you a favor. You was on your way overseas. And I wish I still was. What's got into you anyway? It wasn't right to leave the other guys. It wasn't right. Then why did you go? You want to see your mother, don't you? Yeah, I, I did. Well, not this way. You think I want her to find out I'd, I'd deserted? She was proud I was in the Army. Well, all right, crybaby. Shut up! Who are you telling to shut up? Now, you touch me, Leo, and I'll, I'll bust you with one of them rocks. Ah, now, look, kid, we're traveling together. Let's keep it peaceful, huh? Well, okay. Hey, hey, there's a road up ahead. Can you make out that sign on the fence? Uh, keep cattle gate closed, Matha Ranch. Hey, maybe we can chow down with the hands. I'm giving myself up since we're at their ranch house. Oh, no, you're not. Look, I ain't listening to you no more. If I tell the army the truth, maybe they'll let me go back to the outfit. You ain't going nowhere except with me. No crybaby's going to ruin my plans. I don't care about your plans. I'm going back to the outfit. That's what you said. Let me go. You You can't stop me. I'll show you what I can't do. Oh, you dirty little... You can't stop me. Uh, uh, I don't want to fight you no more, Benson. So don't start up again here. Now, come on. Get up and let's get going. Hey, Benson. Why don't you get up? Benson. Benson, what, what's wrong with you? Holy cow. Later that morning, the sheriff of Humboldt County was called to the Matha Ranch. Elderly Pete Matha had been severely beaten and his car stolen. The sheriff drove to the scene and immediately requested the aid of the Texas Rangers. Rangers Jace Pearson and Clay Morgan met the sheriff at the ranch at 11 a.m. After a brief talk with the sheriff, the rangers went into the bedroom to interview the victim. Sounds like somebody really worked the old man over. Yeah, I hope he can give us a lead on who did it. Uh Mr. Mather? Yes? I'm Ranger Pearson. This is Ranger Morgan. You feel up to answering a few questions? Uh, Go ahead. Would you tell us exactly what happened? <clears throat> well, I, I went to the barn and fixed some harness and heard something around back and went around to look. What was it, Mr. Mather? Well, a soldier trying to start my car. I, I got a 32 Rio, parked it around there. It was, he, he was trying to steal it. And what'd you do? Well, I yelled at him and told him to get out of there and ran over to pull him out. He, he, he jumped out on me and knocked me around. I, I fell down and he kicked me here in, here in the head. What'd he look like? He, he had an army uniform on, blood on it, face marked up like 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 he's been fighting. Was he a big fellow, Mister Mather? Well, he better than average size, black hair, a Texas boy. Way he talked, I, I'd known him again if I saw him. Remember anything about his uniform, shoulder patch, anything like that? A patch? Yeah, usually wear them just off the left shoulder. It tells what outfit he's with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do remember. It was a, a kind of a, a kind of a bell and the, the firecracker going crossways in, in front of it. It's the 903rd Infantry Division, Jason. Mm-hmm. Their camp's located over in the east part of the state. That narrows it down some. Yeah, could be any one of fifteen thousand men. We learned the 903rd Division had left their camp, and because of the troop movement, no man had been granted leave. The Army promised a quick check with the 903rd. The next morning at Ranger headquarters, I received a call from the adjutant general's office. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, what'd you find out, Jace? Plenty. Two soldiers went AWOL from the 903rd. One's Frank Dorsey and the other's Leo Benson. Both disappeared from a troop train on the Santa Fe somewhere in this general area. Well, we can break down even further. Mr. Mather said the soldier was a Texan. They both are. Dorsey comes from Pinker, and Benson's hometown's Abilene. Pinker's only 40 miles from here. Maybe we better go over there first. Could be Dorsey wanted the car to get home. Let's go pay him a visit. We drove over to Pinker, Texas, and went to Dorsey's address. Turned out to be a small farmhouse about five miles north of town. No one seemed to be at home. Think he's in there playing possum? Could be. Let's go around. And hey, wait a minute. Hmm. Car's slowing down to turn in here. Yeah. 
Looks like a girl driving. She's alone. Dorsey could have ducked down the seat. No, yeah, she's alone, all right. Hi. Can I help you, Rangers? You live here, miss? Yes, I do. Frank Dorsey, any kin to you? Well, he's my brother. I'm Norma Dorsey. I'm Ranger Pearson. This is Ranger Morgan. Can you tell us where your brother is? Well, he's he's on his way overseas. Have you heard from him lately? Well, I... Miss Dorsey, has your brother been here? Oh, please, Ranger. Give the kid a break. He's in trouble, you know. If you'd help us, you'd make it easier all the way around. Well, Frank was here. Came home yesterday. Poor kid looked terrible. He was tired and his uniform all messed up. He told me all about jumping off the train. Is he here now? No. I want you to know why he did it, though. Why he went AWOL. Even a good reason won't excuse him, miss. Oh, I want you to know anyway. You see, my, my mother's sick. And Frank went to the hospital to see her last night. He'll probably never see her again. Well, that's why Frank went to AWOL. I'm sorry, Miss Dorsey, but we still have to pick him up. There'd be less trouble if you tell us where he is. All right. Frank's on his way to Dallas. I just saw him off on the 918 bus. Thank you. Come on, Clay. Well, he's going to turn himself in. Why can't you leave him alone? Because he didn't leave someone else alone. <laughs> The lady selling tickets at the bus station in Pinker told us Frank Dorsey got on a Continental bus to Dallas. We took off down the highway after it. Thirty minutes later, we spotted the bus. That's it, Jace, up ahead. Flag him down when I pull alongside. Right. Hey! Hey, driver! Pull over and stop! The driver sure looks surprised. Probably thinks he's getting a ticket. I wonder what Dorsey did with the rancher's car. Uh, abandoned it somewhere, I guess. We'll find out. Oh, sh- you go on in, Jason. We've got a passenger on here we want to talk to, driver. Only take a minute. I thought that About a half a dozen soldiers back there, Jason. Yeah, just look for the 903rd shoulder patch. Right. Hey, that must be him. You Frank Dorsey? Y- y- yes, sir. You better come with us. What for? We'll talk about that outside. Got any luggage with you, son? No, sir. Let's go. Thanks, driver. You can go now. I was trying to get back to the outfit, honest. You're going the wrong way, son. Your outfit isn't in Dallas. Come on, get in. Yes, sir. I was going there to catch a plane for San Francisco. That's where the division went. I'm willing to go back to the outfit and face charges. We didn't pick you up for going AWOL. You know that. What for, then? Beating an old rancher half to death. An old rancher? No, I didn't. Where were you yesterday morning? Anywhere near the Mather Ranch? Well, yes, sir, I was. That's when Pete Mather was beaten up. How about it? Pete Mather? Look, Rangers, I jumped off a train and went home, but I didn't beat up any old man. No? How'd you get those bruises then? From jumping off the train. And you didn't steal Mather's car, I suppose? No. You know another soldier, a fellow named Leo Benson? Yes, sir, I know him. Did he jump off the train with you? No, sir, I, I was alone. And you're the one soldier from the 903rd who was close enough to the Mather Ranch to have done it. But I didn't. We think you did. Let's see what Pete Mather thinks. We got to the Mather Ranch a little after 12. I stayed with Dorsey in the car while Clay went in to get permission from the old man to bring the prisoner in. Clay came back and said Pete Mather was anxious to see if we really had his assailant. We took Frank Dorsey into the house. Let's go in the bedroom, Dorsey. Howdy, Mr. Mather. How are you feeling today? Oh, better, Ranger, better. You, that the fellow you want me to look at? Yes, sir. You ever seen him before? Well, bring him closer to the bed. I want to take a good look at him. Now, that's enough, Dorsey. Mister, you don't know me. Tell him you don't. How about it, Mr. Mather? Is this the soldier who beat you up? Looks like you made a mistake, Rangers. I've never seen this boy before in my whole life. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Now that spring is officially here, most of us will be pleasure driving on the highways more often than previously. 
But when you drive, keep in mind that road conditions in many areas are still dangerous. Remember that when you drive, you always have an unwelcome passenger. Danger. So as you take the family for a Sunday outing in your automobile, drive carefully. Careful driving is good driving. The men who drive for a living, the truck drivers, are taught to be careful and courteous. They know that careful and courteous driving are two of the major reasons why accidents don't happen. Yes, statistics of the American Safety Council show that the majority of automobile accidents happen because the drivers involved were not careful, were not observing traffic laws and road conditions. And here's a slogan for every driver to remember. A rolling ball is always followed by a running child. So when you drive, please be careful. The life you save may be a child's. And now let's return to the tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Troop Train. Pete Mather insisted Frank Dorsey was not the man who'd attacked him. We left a few minutes later to drive Dorsey into town. We planned to leave him with the sheriff who would hold him for the Army authorities. Sorry we brought you up here, Dorsey, but we thought it was you. It's the only way to find out. Yes, sir. Yeah, Jace, where does this leave us? Only one way I can see it. The other G.I. who jumped the train, Leo Benson. Must have been him. Why do you say that? The soldier who beat up Pete Mather was from your division. You and Benson, the only ones missing from the 903rd. He must have jumped right after you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see Benson's home address was Abilene, wasn't it, Jace? We'll head down there, huh? Yeah, as soon as we hand Dorsey over to the sheriff. Listen, I, I got to tell you. What is it, Dorsey? I, I got to tell someone. I, I, I couldn't sleep last night. I kept seeing him all night. I kept seeing him the way it happened. Seeing who? It, it wasn't Benson who beat up that old man. And you won't find him in Abilene. How do you know? I killed him. You did what? You say you killed Benson? It was an accident. He talked me into jumping off the train with him. After I did, I figured out what a big mistake I made. I wanted to turn myself in. He wouldn't let me, and, well, we got into a fight. He fell and hit his head on a rock. There was blood all over him. Where was this? Back at that old man's ranch, just off a little dirt road. Suppose you show us where. Stop by this cattle gate. Uh, it's through this gate and over that way. He's right over there on the other side of that brush. Pretty isolated place. No telling when the body would have been spotted. Uh, Buzzard would have found it pretty soon. Do I have to go with you? I'm getting sick to my stomach. You stay here with him, Clay. Okay. We started fighting just about there. You say you left him behind this brush? Yes. Something wrong, Jace? Yeah. There's blood on the rock, all right. There's no body. We took Frank Dorsey to the local jail. With the aid of the sheriff and his deputies, we searched the entire area. No trace of Benson was found. Ranger Morgan and I then drove to Abilene. Benson's address was a garage apartment in the rear of a large, rundown house. Up those steps, I guess. She ain't home! A woman at the back door of that house. What's that, ma'am? Well, if you're looking for Miss Benson, Ranger, she ain't here. Been gone a couple of days. We wanted to see Mr. Benson. Is he here? Him? No, he's in the Army a long time now. You any kin to the Bensons? Heck no. Just rent him in our apartment. I live up here in the front house. And do you have a key to their place? We like to look around. Well, I'll show you where there is one. Right. Oh, I've got the miseries in my back. Something awful. Ain't hardly walk. What you want him for? Something bad? We just want to talk to him. Oh, that man's plumb no good. Running around the whole time I was here. Suppose now he's in the army. He's got the whole country to run around in. Yeah, she always keeps extra key under this map. For the ice man. Oh, one of you boys better get it. My back's something fierce today. I'll get it. Say, Rangers, 
Now, I don't like to get in the way of the law or nothing like that, but you sure it's all right for me to let you in up by her? I won't get in no trouble, will I? We brought a search warrant, ma'am. My, sure looks legal, don't it? Well, you boys better go on ahead. Take me some time to get up them stairs. All right, ma'am. Come on, Clay. If he isn't dead, he could have come home yesterday and taken off with his wife. Or else she might have gone out to pick him up somewhere. Well, there's still a chance he's up here hiding out. Yeah. Try again, huh? Well, I told you she wasn't home. You to the key. Yes, ma'am. Take a look in that bedroom, Clay. I'll see what's in this closet here. Right. Chase, come here. What is it, Clay? There's nobody here, but take a look at this. Benson's uniform. Quite a bit of blood on it. Yeah, he was here alive, anyway. Dorsey would be glad to hear that. It's like they cleaned the place out. Did you check the closet? No, I'll get it now. Some clothes still in here. Say, can I come in there? Sure, ma'am. Well, them stairs will be the death of me. I ain't nearly as surprised. My bedding. Why'd she take my bedding? Maybe she sent it to the laundry. No. <laughs> Linen belongs to me. I give her clean ones every Monday. Blankets are gone, too. I wonder why she took them. Well, for... A lot of clothes left in the closet, Chase. Didn't take everything. I'll check the kitchen. Okay. I want to look in this bureau. My, she sure keeps a sloppy house, don't she? That window there ain't been washed in a couple, three years, I bet. Mm, plenty of stuff in here. Hmm. Photo album. Oh. Would you pick Benson's picture out for me, ma'am? Glad to. Yeah, that's him. And that wedding picture. Uh-huh. Oh, here's another one of him. Reckon that's cabin where they used to go. Yeah, there's more pictures of that cabin. Is that their car in this picture? Let me see. Uh-huh. Well, they still got that. That's his wife next to him. Have you ever seen this man near the other car? Uh-uh. Never saw him before. Say, you sure caught a mess of fish, didn't you? The Bensons own that cabin? I don't rightly know. They never was very friendly. Have you any idea where it might be located? No idea at all. Find anything, Clay? Yeah, in a way. It's what I didn't find. They took all the food with them. Take a look at this photo album. Yeah, look here. Back here. This is Benson and his wife at a cabin. See there? Look at the year of the license plate on their car. 1939. Yeah, look here. Same cabin, same car, only the license is for 1940. Uh-huh. There's some more snaps taken there in 41. They kept going back there. Maybe they own it. Oh, no, they couldn't own it. Since they took all the food and bedding, seems logical they might have headed for a place like that. You know where it is? No. But the owner of that other car in the picture does. You can locate him through that license number. It might add up to something, might not. That's what we're going to find out. We checked the license number of the car in the picture. It belonged to a man named Harry Steelman. Steelman worked at a cotton compress in the edge of town. We went there. All right, you finish that line. We'll get moving on those bales at that end. All right, all right. Mr. Steelman? Yeah, hold on a minute, will you? Hey, Charlie, we haven't got all day. Get the lead out. What do you want, Reggie? We'd like to talk to you. All right, let's go back to the office. Come on, keep them bells moving out. Been having nothing but trouble. Compress broke down. We lost four hours this morning. I'll never catch up with this, Ray. Uh, something I can do for you? We're looking for Leo Benson. Have you seen him? Leo? Not for six, eight months. He's in the Army. You heard from him lately? No, I haven't. Lost two of my best men to the Army in the past week. What new fellas I can get is slower than cold molasses. Are you and Benson good friends? Yeah, yeah. I've known him a long time. Used to get together every once in a while. Ever go fishing with him? In a cabin, maybe? Yeah, a couple times. Where? Down the Blanco River country, east of Kilman. Celia, that's Leo's wife, her dad left it to her. You know if they keep food and bedding in the cabin? No, I'm pretty sure they don't. They only went up there once in a while. Uh, anything else? And just one more thing. Yeah. How do we get to this cabin? I can show you on a map... But uh, I can tell you one thing. Celia sure wouldn't be up there by herself. That's just what we were thinking. Steelman showed us the approximate location of the cabin on a map. Early the following morning, we drove down there. There's smoke over there. That must be it. Yeah, let's park the car here and find out. 
Toward the steelman's direction, that's just about where the cabin should be. Uh-huh. Oh, there it is. The clearing to the river. Let's go this way. No signs of life except that smoke. I don't see the car. And Benson's wife might have gone somewhere with it. I don't think he'd stick his nose out of these woods. Open up, Benson. Now, let's take a look in that window. Well, they've been here all right. Dish is still on the table. Let's see what's out back. It's great country for bass. I wouldn't mind if it... Hold it, Jason. What is it, Clay? Thought I saw someone move over there. Here, down by the river. Where? By that big boulder. You see? To the right of it. No one there now. Well, let's take a look. He was right about here. A couple of stones kicked over here. Still damp where they were. I guess there must have been someone. I'll take a look around back of the boulder. Right. Jace, the string of fish here is still wet. There he goes! There he goes behind you, Jace! He's across the river! I'll get him! Benson, stop! Get away from me! Let me stop! You okay, Jace? Yeah. All right, Benson. On your feet. You went to a lot of, a lot of trouble for nothing, Ranger. I, I was going to give myself up anyhow. You were, huh? Sure I was. I'd rather spend a couple of years in jail than go overseas. That's better than getting my head shot off, ain't it? In your case, Benson, I'm not so sure. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Later today, you'll find more great entertainment all lined up for you on this NBC station. Next, it's The Big Show with a star-studded guest list and your unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. And Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct The Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. Later tonight, be sure to hear the hilarious Phil Harris and Alice Faye show, featuring the comedy antics of Frankie Revely, Julius Abruzio, and Brother William. There's mirth and music with Phil and Alice and their delightful program. Remember, too, that Theater Guild on the Air will bring you another entertaining dramatization of an exciting play co-starring two of your favorite Broadway stars. Yes, Sunday is fun day on NBC because of the many fine shows sent your way to add to your listening pleasure. Later tonight, a special broadcast featuring a speech by Benjamin Fairless. Remember, for fine entertainment all the rest of the day, stay tuned to this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now for the conclusion of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Frank Dorsey was turned over to the Army authorities and received six months' confinement for being absent without leave. Leo Benson was found guilty of car theft and assault and battery. He was sentenced to five years at Huntsville Penitentiary. Upon his release from prison, he was returned to the Army and received two years for desertion and a dishonorable discharge. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Peter Leeds, Sam Edwards, Herb Ellis, Vivid Jansen, and Janet Nolan. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Bernard Ederer and Robert A. White, and the program is produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, enjoy 90 minutes of comedy and music on The Big Show on NBC.